Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Today's matchup features one of the best passing offenses in the NFL. The Colts are top 10 in pass yards, and they're going up against the Titans, who will need to be ready to cover a lot of space. From the heartland of America, EA Sports coverage of the NFL takes us to Lucas Oil Stadium here in Indianapolis. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it, this crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Tennessee Titans and the Indianapolis Colts. This is taken at his four. Up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. And they'll be let out by their quarterback, the very, very talented Andrew Luck. I don't know about you, but I've absolutely loved his consistency throughout the season. Always good, occasionally spectacular. But right now, he's on the outside of that MVP race. What's it going to take for him to get it done down the stretch? You're right, on the fringe. But hey, it's week 14. There's still a month left for him to make a lasting impression, have some scintillating plays, and then who knows? Yeah, those scintillating plays, those splash plays, those plays we'll talk about for the next week leading up to the next game. He'll need a bunch of those down the stretch in order to win the award. Here's Locke. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Hale. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. And it's a 14-yard pickup, but it'll still be second down. So that's what we're used to seeing from him right there. Plays like that, why he's number four in the league in terms of receiving yardage. Able to make adjustments all along the way. It doesn't matter where he lines up, where he releases from. Working his way into the secondary, figures out defenses and finds weak spots in order to get open. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Third play here, this opening drive as they're up against a third and five. From the gun, here's Love. Over the middle, complete. That's Hale. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. That one goes for 29 yards on third down. Probably to jump in on you, partner, but they didn't waste any time getting downfield, did they? I mean, a nice big play there. Three plays, three successful plays in plus territory. Now this defense on its heels a bit. It seems like they had something targeted there, doesn't it? It's like, okay, we've got a matchup we like coming right out of the gate. Let's go ahead and get right to it. The numbers for him from a week ago. 16 carries, 91 yards. And they love what they've got in him. He's the number four rusher in the league right now, so you know that you have to account for him on defense, which means you can play complimentary football as well. Throw the play action, get it out to the wide receivers, because they should have some open space, because the defense would key on them. Here's one. And his throw here is incomplete. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. Now Luff. He's going to float this one deep right side. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Well, these guys have won three straight ball games and another good start to this one out to the 6 0 lead. And I've talked with so many different coaches, as have you, along the way. And they always talk about winning streaks and the mood of a team and how much easier it is to actually prepare during that time. Guys are sharp. Guys are focused. Everyone's feeling good. And we're seeing it early in this one. Out 
finds the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is taken at the three. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Joseph. And it's the right side here, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 23 yards on the play. They've got good playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. I don't know what happened last week to, to really hurt their performance and, and hold down their production, but I would dare say that this week in practice, there's a lot of talk about how they're going to increase their proficiency. Yeah, that was a good start getting the playmakers involved. You mentioned that to me pregame. That's what they did there. Yeah, I think a lot of people think the coaching staff really gets on them, and that's how they motivate them. Most of these guys are self-motivated. They have a lot of pride in their performance. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They'll run it again with Henry. And some room to maneuver. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. The numbers on the ground for Henry last week. 17 carries, 70 yards. After the last game, they have plenty of reason to be confident in their running game. And even though they're facing a top-10 defense, they're not going to shy away from doing what they do best. Make them adjust to them. Make them stop what they do before they do any type of a changeup. A first down carry for Henry. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Ten yards still left on second down. forward to the 29-yard line. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. They got to get to the 20 to keep the drive alive on third down. From the gun, Joseph. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. The Titans efficient passing on this drive. There's another first down. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up the first down. That's what impresses me about him when he's called upon. And he will score. Touchdown, Titans. Derrick Henry, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Titans are an extra point away from tying this thing up. And there you go. Nothing really too complex. Block, keep your assignments, let them run it in. They did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking. Beats good tackling on that play. And result, touchdown. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. As the Colts offense makes their way out, we take a look at the playoff picture in the AFC. As we take a look at the playoff picture, and certainly a lot of jostling still to go in these final few weeks. For the moment, they would be a wild card team far from locked up. But that's why this is exciting. These last few weeks, a lot to play for. Yeah, exciting for us because we get to talk about it. And, you know, at the end of the day, six teams are going to go from each conference. And guess what? We're going to have a playoff. But nerve-wracking for all the people involved, all the teams, because their goal is to get there. And anything less than that makes the season a disappointment. So this is the, they've got to be primed now for a big finish to their season. Here's Luck now on second down. And a quick throw here that's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. These are his numbers from last week's contest. 
And you figure that he'll probably be a big factor in this one as well. No question about it, partner. We just saw right there. They want to get him the ball in space and see what he can do after the catch. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now it's locked. He's going to loft this one deep left sideline. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. What I loved about meeting with these coaches before the game is we didn't even have to ask any questions. They told us that they were going to be aggressive and push the ball downfield. They weren't successful on that play, but look for them to try it again later. They'll send a receiver in motion to the left. And now here's a carry heading left. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. He lost two there, and it's third down. Okay, let's just make this one simple. We know that the running game is not their thing, but they can't just throw it on every single down without expecting some real heat from the pass rush. Now Luck. Gets it off to Freeman. And he's going to get this one down right to the edge of the red zone of the chalk of the 20. A big 30-yard play on third. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass in the first drive and comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. A really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. A great effort there. His 17th touchdown now on the season. And the Colts have taken the lead. Well, part of me, that was another explosive run. And one thing I've learned in our time in this game, yes, the offensive line has to get a lot of credit. But for big runs to occur, the wide receivers have to block well downfield. And then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball too, right? Oh, uh, without a doubt. You need that difference maker lugging the rock. This is fielded at the goal line. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And as this offense makes their way back out, NFC playoff race time. We give you a look at what's going on there. And I tell you, four weeks still to go, and everything is wide open, go. and it's fun. And I know we always talk about, well, if the playoffs were to begin today, and then we kind of go, okay, but they're not. Let's see how it plays out. Wouldn't it be fun to play with this playoff lineup right now? Because to me, just about anyone can win this whole thing out of this grouping we currently have. And by the time we get there, it may look entirely different. Back to throw. Joseph goes underneath for Henry. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. With the former volunteer Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Titans with the football here to begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. <laughs> Operating from the gun, Joseph. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Mills. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who could turn it loose. And, boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Second down, here's Henry. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up the first down, keep the sticks moving. Now a play fake here on first down. 
Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Looking to throw on second down. Joseph, and incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down. Then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back. But it's a big play. They've got to hold up. Third and long. Joseph. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete. Certainly one they'd like to have back as it breaks up fourth down. Are we on the same page here, partner? Because I think they have the right idea. Just take what you can get on third and forever. Yeah, in real life, I'd say yes. It's just these video games are tempting. You want to go downfield with it. I like the way you evolved. Yeah. You know, you've learned how to play it the Madden way. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's in. The Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. Hoping now to get back in the end zone on this fourth possession. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And that run was memorable for only one reason. There was absolutely no place to run with the football. No gaps, no creases, no gain. Off of play action, Love. And he finds a man on the crossing route. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Strike quickly here for six points. Now he's having a nice little first half here, partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come. I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There can be plenty more before this game is over. This is fielded at the goal line. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And we spotlight Derrick Henry now. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. Now we've got movement up front. I think this is going to be on the Titans. Taylor Luan, the former first-rounder from Michigan flag there. to throw on second down. Joseph looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Out routes are always timing routes. And if the timing's off just a little bit, it can really throw off a play. It looked like he led him a little too much there. Yeah, there was a fraction of a second because he caught it, just couldn't stay in bounds. Throwing on third and long. Joseph. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. A rookie QB struggling, gets thrown down to the ground there. But, you know, maybe this game, it's not over yet, but maybe this game can be a learning experience for him. So many different things that he has to pick up on. When to, when to go ahead and flush from the pocket and run. When to get rid of the football and not take the sack. When to just go ahead and go down early and make sure you don't, make sure you don't fumble the football. So many things that he has to learn. This game starts the process. 
And the Colts coming out now. And the ledger for them so far looks pretty good, doesn't it? It certainly does. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. <laughs> Not sure it could be much better than that. They've got to feel very good about the groove that they're in at this stage of the game. throw lock got his man complete over the middle it's robertson and he's taken down but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40 and with that completion he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half boy a tough start for the secondary defensively it is and it's got to put a dent in their confidence and you know you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays but with the kind of numbers he's putting up here it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure... And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. We see this route all the time, but when it's well executed, it's a beauty. And it feels like the fade takes forever to develop, like that ball is just hanging in the air. And the reason why is that the receiver is trying his best to work the defender inside and give himself space to fade away from him and catch the football. And that's exactly what happened there. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And as this offense makes their way back out, it's AFC playoff race time as we give you a look. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Defenses always talk about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? Win first down so they can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. Again, it's Henry. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. Back-to-back -back runs. I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal game. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. The Titans on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and eight. Looking to throw. Joseph. Over the middle complete. That's Mills. <laughs> A big hit. Knocked down sideways. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. down from the side near the 48 yard line a loss of a full three yards and now it's second down how about that partner that happened in a hurry sudden explosive gets into the backfield and spills the play yeah he was afc defensive player of the week last week because of plays just like that back to throw joseph he dumps it off for henry and he'll get nothing out of that one no gain on that one, and it's going to bring up a third down. The defense loves to hang their hat on that, don't they? You get a guy that catches the ball, but you stop him for no gain. Without a doubt, because they're also used to trying to catch people after the catch, and they miss. And that turns into what? A huge play. We've seen it so many times. In this case, though, catch was made, put down right on the spot. Pressure, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back right around the 44. We remind you that coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will have the highlights and analysis of this first half from our studios in Orlando. And I have a fairly solid idea about which team will be featured prominently in those highlights. <laughs> Might be a little bias. Oh, he takes it in, doesn't let it bounce. He takes it at the two. Good coverage there. An even 50-yard punt leads to a return of five. And the Colts are going to take over, albeit deep in their own territory. 
Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. They have been red hot, sometimes white hot here in this first half. They're just looking to add to that total right now. And this has to serve as a reminder to myself because so many times I get wrapped up in the play calling, how they've sequenced things, how it's run. But you know, at the end of the day, it's still execution. Those guys out on the field, and right now they are locked in and really looking good. They'll try to continue to be locked in here as we get ready to approach halftime. Now a play fake, and it's locked. He's going to walk one deep left side here. And that's caught inside the 30. A big play there for Indy. 51 yards. Forget height and catch radius. When you run the fade really well, run down the defender, kind of take him a little bit towards the middle of the field, and then fade to the sideline and give your quarterback some space, it can be executed that well, just as we saw. On first and ten, Locke. This throw caught right around the six. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. This offense can certainly move quickly when they want to. Three plays, three pass completions. In the blink of an eye, they've got a first and goal. Almost felt like a lightning bolt hit in this game, didn't it? For them to get downfield that quickly. And now first and goal, expect them to tap right here on this play. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. A great play there. His second TD of the game and 18th of the year. And the Colts are able to grow their lead. Heard a coach talk about those late in the half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that could finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. A first look at the NFL scoreboard comes from down in Arizona. And the 49ers are out to the early lead. I have a feeling that one's going to stay tight throughout. We'll continue to monitor. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. The Titans offense now, they work their way back onto the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. Looking to throw on second down. Joseph is going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it will help them at contract time. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That yeah, came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And he fields it cleanly. Powering forward. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. to the 29. So we... Sorry, Larry, your hard work appreciated by so many men and women, but not today as we get back to the action in the second half. So both teams have their marching orders and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. Fielded about a yard deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. 
Here's the Titan offense now as they make their way back onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. 17 yards on that play for the Titans. The more football I watch, the more I want to check and see if teams are going to panic when they're down on the scoreboard. And this team has shown no signs of doing that. A lot of the time, they come out after the half. Things haven't worked so well in the first go-around. They want to throw the football like crazy. But the way to open up throwing the ball is to run it. And they've run it well here to start the second half. Looking to throw. Joseph. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Corey Davis, the intended receiver, and it's second down. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Throwing again on second and ten. Joseph. And incomplete. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Off the play fake, Joseph. And incomplete, the contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. And we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Now how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude <laughs> by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. And to give this time to the tailback. And the window closes quickly. He'll only get up to the 22-yard line. Only a yard on the pickup. And now they've got a third down and eight. Tough day. Tough sledding right there. And it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Throwing on third down. Luck. He's going to float this one. He's got a man complete. The 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Indianapolis. A big play there. 78 yards. And the Colts just continue to pour it on. Yeah, I'm fun with this one, partner. Oh, yeah, I mean, he's been fun to watch under center. We always talk about, you know, getting to the next level, right? When we see people get into the zone, this guy's in the master class right now. What a performance he's putting on, just carving them up. Four touchdown passes, carving them up is right. Seems like everything he throws is going to be a completion and going in the end zone. This is fielded at the goal line. And, oh, he is really laid out that time. Knocked flat on his back. And the Titans getting set to go. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more in their head. And what I mean by that is just what you said. You've gone over the changes. I bet they were pretty clinical at the half, not too emotional. They might need to go to the emotional <laughs> side because you've got to find something, some spark somewhere. And so far... Just being calm hasn't exactly worked. They need any spark at this point. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Tight, tight, watch left. Tight, tight, watch left. Oh, there we go. Oh, 
They keep it with Henry on first down. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Boy, that's a lot of sirloin steak to be taken down for no gain, partner. <laughs> Are you trying to suggest that he is a huge go. man? He is Not a just a big, big man, big, a huge man. Big, big boy. Well, how about the credit then for the defense to be able to chop that big tree and put him on the ground? I know back when you played, it took four of you to take a guy like that down, right? Well, that's for sure. And then you know what, know what else? I didn't want to challenge him at dinner either. <laughs> so now third and ten, a big play to start the drive, but nothing since. From the gun, Joseph. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Mills. And he's going to be taken down, but not before reaching the 15-yard line. A really good pickup of 28 yards. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Henry out of the pistol. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Come on, let's go! What? Nine! What? Nine! 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 To throw on second down. Joseph. In the end zone, touchdown, Tennessee. Sometimes those tight ends are a mismatch. They found the mismatch there. And that's exactly why you want to draw up those types of plays because coverage is just going to go to the natural guys, the guys that make the big plays on the outside. But if you work your tight end into it, that's a tough one for a defense to handle. Tough, they couldn't handle it. It worked out for six. This one taken from the seven. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. And last time out, another touchdown. And I think there may be some empty seats around here by the time the fourth quarter comes around. Yeah, I have to agree with you because this was just about decided. But you know who benefits from all those empty seats? True. You and me trying to get to the airport. That's the roads will be fairly that, clear that is by the one time positive. we have to leave the booth. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. But I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Now a handoff here to his running back. And the hole closes quickly there. He gets maybe a couple up to the 38. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. The Colts on third down. A perfect four for four thus far. This time it's third and three. Back to throw. Luck. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. 23 yards on the play. Well, he flew past 200, 300, 400 yards. Now he's over 450 yards passing on the day. So what you're saying is oxygen for everyone catching the ball and trying to defend? Yeah, especially those guys trying to defend right now. No doubt. They've got to be a confused group because they haven't been able to defend him very well at all. And I think he just wants to keep firing. When you have that kind of a day, you're just locked in. Just keep calling those pass plays. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. That'll go as a loss of five. And that'll force upon him a third and 14. Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game, but what a nice play by the defense. Stepping up on that one. Maybe they'll get things going in their direction after a play like that. Third and long. It's long. And he's going to be swallowed up. Sacked back at the 45-yard line. Casey Walker. 
in there to drop him for a loss of 10. And it'll be fourth and long. Brandon, what I remember most about playing with guys who knew how to rush the passer, they would just tell you, just cover people for me, just long enough for me to get there. And that's exactly what happened on that play. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two-minute. Who knows? Let's see what they decide to do. Throwing on first down. Joseph. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that's going to lead to a third and 11. I'm no offensive mastermind, but of all the guys on the field to block, you might want to stop him. Look, I've got a very simple rule. An unblocked defender is usually your best defender, and he ended up making the play there. And he's got a man, Corey Davis. And he is going to feel that one knocked down hard. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. Now the offense lining up first and ten. Operating from the gun. Joseph, quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. A gain of six there on first. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle him after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Looking to throw on second down. Joseph. And not escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. The Titans on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is going to be third and 13. From the gun, Joseph. And he can't quite pick it. No interception so far. That probably should have been their first, but at least it's fourth down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. Here we go! Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Trying to lay one up deep. And this is going to be incomplete. The Titans try it, but ultimately they fail on fourth down. And the Colts are going to get the football in outstanding field position. A gutsy decision there at this stage in the second half in their own territory. And a decision that they might regret. Can't wait for the postmortem. You know, this postgame press conference, because the questions are going to come fast and furious about this decision. No matter how the, how the game turns out, right? What were you thinking there? Why did you have a certain play call? Did, were you copping your defense? Oh, yeah. Why? <laughs> it's yeah. going to keep coming up. Yeah, no matter the scoreboard, just tough to justify. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll get a couple here down to the 22. side here and not much to speak of there maybe a yard down to the 20 
The Colts on third down. They have been superb. Five for six to this point. This will be third and six. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Here's Dustin Hopkins now to try the field goal. This will be a 34-yard attempt. And Hopkins' kick is good. And they're well on their way now as the lead grows even larger. So he splits the uprights there, and I would imagine it's nice as a kicker. Right when it leaves your foot, you know it's good. Yeah, it's kind of like a golfer that picks up his tee after a nice drive without even watching it land. Solid analogy. I like it. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Titans offense now, they get set to head back out here. And on that last drive, went for it on fourth, turned it over. A good job by their defense, though. They held them to three, but this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down, when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here, because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what happened. You think that factored in? I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. That coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting into the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? And that one got tipped. Kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. Well, we're not playing three yards in the cloud of dust football anymore. I kind of get why those old school coaches sometimes didn't want to throw the football. Because if it's popped up in the air, it almost turns into slow motion and both sides trying to get to the football and you're holding your breath wondering whether it's going to go good or bad for your team. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Mills. It goes as a gain of nine and it moves the chains. And they're on third and short. They just tried to spread the field. It worked. And I think that the spreading of the field, the extra receivers has really become the next in the evolutionary chain in the NFL. Go all the way back in that situation, you're handed to the fullback. Got a man, and it's taken in for a Titans touchdown. Kyle Rudolph with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Titans are able to close the gap just a bit. Suck him for the extra point. And the lead is down to 24. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. And this is going to be taken in by the Colts. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it. They do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage, use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. The Colts on third down. They've been very good. Five for seven thus far. This will be third and five. Gonna give this time to the tailback. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Just a yard on the run there, and that's gonna bring us to a fourth down. 
Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football. They just swarmed and stopped them for almost no gain. And checking that NFL scoreboard there in the fourth quarter down in Arizona. And not much trouble for the 49ers in that when they opened the lead a bit further. Another victory perhaps in the cards. They're looking as good as anybody as the playoffs draw near. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Second down of the offense in search of six yards. Operating from the gun, Joseph over the middle complete. It's Mills, and he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Time for a break. We'll come back and wrap up garbage time after this. So the Titans in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They've got a first and ten as they search for a late score. Let's go! On first down, Joseph. His throw incomplete. Corey Davis, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. And on second and ten now. To throw again. Joseph, he's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Call it a gain of five. And they're going to have a third down. From the gun, Joseph. A fight for the football, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 13. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage. They've all been excellent, and now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. They run the counter now on first down. And he's brought down after a good game. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. Well, plenty of credit has to go to the guy carrying the ball. He broke the tackle and gained the yardage. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the defender is bad. They're not going to make 100% of the tackles all the time. Even the best in the game will miss one occasionally. The key is not to let it snowball and miss tackle after tackle. On that play, credit to the offense, but that doesn't make the defense bad. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because there's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they're able to just roam and hit. 